turning off my husband's Xbox while he's in the middle of a game. What are you doing? What? What are you doing? What do you mean? I was playing a game. What are you doing? Oh, I must have hit it on accident. You hit that little button that was lit up on accident? Well, now that you shut it off, do you want to help me do some things right now? Nope. Done. What do you mean? I'm done. Nope. Well, now I'm you're done. Not playing. Can you help? Nope. Too busy. This is a huge trend on TikTok. If you search turning off my boyfriend's game on TikTok, you will get dozens and dozens. And I know some of these are staged. Like in this one, I'm pretty sure bro was in the pregame lobby. But whether they're real or not, they all serve to cater to this desire that women have to do this to their boyfriends. And it's seen as acceptable both because video games are generally seen as pointless and unproductive and because men are generally seen as lazy and unhelpful around the house, so they deserve it. But these are really weak excuses to justify actions that are basically abusive and controlling. And if you don't think that it's abusive and controlling, what words would you use to describe a man who, let's say, hid all of his girlfriend's hair and makeup products from her because he felt like she spent too much time and money on them? Or turned off his wife's computer while she was in the middle of online journaling because it wasn't making anybody any money? Scattered her solitaire deck, deflated her basketball, did anything to interrupt or ruin her pointless but fun hobby? At the end of the day, we all have unproductive hobbies and interests. If we tried to profit off of everything we enjoy, we wouldn't enjoy things anymore. Stop acting like your unproductive hobby or interest is more valuable than his just because it's not video games. And you want to know something else crazy? Video games are valuable. I've learned a ton of words and fun facts from the storylines. I've really challenged myself with some of these puzzles. And I've made really amazing friendships within the online communities. Dude, I just know that if I had just spent 45 minutes rearranging my Animal Crossing island or hunting for Crimson Nern Root in Skyrim and someone just rolled up and cut it off on me, I would know right then and there that I would never be valued by this person unless I was doing exactly what they thought I should be doing. And making someone feel that way is wrong. If you can't be nice to gamers, don't date people that you can't be nice to. I upset a lot of people recently when I made this video where I implied that men are necessary and I wanted to apologize for not making part two sooner. Here's more reasons that we need men. My only regret about the last video is that I focused a little bit too much on their physical labor contributions and not enough on their emotional and sociological contributions. So let's jump right into parenting. First of all, we need fathers involved. When we don't, studies continue to show that children are four times more likely to end up in poverty, abusing drugs and alcohol, dropping out of school, ending up in jail, and their physical and emotional health suffers greatly. There were also studies that showed that paternal roles have a greater influence on impulse control, competition, and independence than maternal roles. And we don't just need dads kind of involved. Ideally, childcare should be equally or equitably split. Studies also indicate that when parenting responsibilities are shared more evenly, it has a much better benefit on the child's cognitive development. Not only is that a win for the child, but the parents are going to be a lot less stressed out when they're dividing childcare and financial providing a little bit more evenly. Now let's talk about art. Think about your favorite authors, your favorite bands, your favorite poets, your favorite musicians. You're telling me none of them are men. You're telling me you're ready to throw Freddie Mercury and David Bowie in the trash? We don't love Arctic Monkeys. We don't love Harry Styles. But just because women can do the same things as men doesn't mean they do it the same way or that we don't need diversity or that without men, we wouldn't die. Not only would we women be miserable because in addition to the 1,000 jobs we already have, we would then have to fill in for the 50% of the population that's now missing, but we also have no way to reproduce. And please no one come in here with that female bone marrow to sperm argument because one, that research is decades away from making anything more than a deformed rat baby that died in a week. And two, suggesting that women could simply undergo such a deeply invasive and expensive fertilization process at the same rate as organic conception is insane. Look, women need men and men need women. These are the facts and there's nothing wrong with appreciating that. And to the commenter who left this gem suggesting that I'm trying to profit off of both sidesism, it's actually just called feminism. Keep calm and stay necessary. So it's already uncomfy enough having to hear people say stupid and misogynistic things. That's why it sucks when some of the responses to this misogyny are just as uncomfy. It always makes me cringe that there are women on this platform, women who I imagine are sick of being objectified, who come in with these response videos to misogyny, but their clapbacks are things like, I bet you don't even pull bitches, or I bet I've slept with more women than you, bro. 
that's not doing what you think it's doing. We clearly have not sent our best. Because are women objects that we should be collecting in mass quantity in order to be valuable, or aren't they? Think about what you're saying. How are you going to claim to be anti-patriarchy, but then challenge men to womanize us in order to be respected? If a man, or anyone, says something misogynistic or just stupid, they've already provided enough source material for you to make fun of and roast. You don't need to start pulling from irrelevant areas like their physical appearance, their grammar, or most cringy, how many bitches they've obtained. Because being single, being bald, being short, none of that says anything about your character. Some of y'all really think you're fighting misogyny by saying this shit, but you're really just contributing to it. I'll end on this. In the words of Alexander Volkanovsky, the UFC's number one men's pound-for-pound -pound champion, pictured here with his wife. Does that have anything you want to say before? Nothing wrong with being a virgin and a nerd. <laughs> So no empathy or concern for men getting falsely accused, which is mentally traumatizing, destroys careers, families, none. Okay, that explains that. Yeah, empathy isn't really a quality that people still admire when the empathy is specifically cherry-picked for only certain demographics. Most reasonable people feel empathy both for victims of assault and for victims of false allegations of assault. Empathy is not mutually exclusive. I feel like this creator, like a lot of people, probably sees believing allegations through the lens of the trolley problem. If you have to pick a path for the train to go, let's say the path heading this way is believing all allegations. You're going to save more people because you'll catch more people, but at the same time, you're going to have to hit people who didn't do anything wrong. So while a lot of people would end up choosing the path that hits less people, they would still feel terrible for the people who got hit. That's why it's weird for me to see someone so aggressively bankrupt of empathy. Especially because according to this creator's own research, between 2 and 10% of accusations are false. And I was able to find studies that do back up that number. That's every 1 in 10 accusations. To discredit that as some low, negligible number is so irresponsible. You want to know why over 60% of cases go unreported? Largely because of these false accusations, making it harder and harder to be believed. And you think that the only reason that we want to crack down so hard and see punishment for false accusations is simply because we don't like women? It is literally the opposite. You are not protecting women by refusing to hold other women accountable, by defending Amber Heard, or by minimizing the pain and trauma that men endure. I'm sure you're going to go on to think that you are protecting women, but you're doing nothing but perpetuating toxic cycles. Dude, did you guys hear that there was once a time that Andrew Tate was broken up with on his birthday, so he lost his shit, left his own party, and then hit his ex with his car? Like, absolutely unhinged behavior. Like, dude is an absolute piece of shit. Oh, wait. That wasn't Andrew Tate. That was this girl. I didn't have it in myself to go with Grace. 42,000 of you liked it. Let's look at these comments. It's okay because he's a Gemini. Him being a Gemini justifies it. Personally, I think you went with grace. Gemini men slander. You did what we all wish we had the guts to do. Good. Love that. Literally my hero. Slay. As a Gemini, slay, girl. You did not. I did. Queen. Calmer than I would have been. Incredible, stunning, aspirational. Nia, that's what we should do to Ethan. Look out, Ethan, as you should, period. It's okay because he's a Gemini. Goals, your defense is 100% understandable. I actually hit his car, but same. As someone who is actually in the honorary was broken up with on my birthday gang, what the f is wrong with y'all? Y'all realize that the I'm toxic but it's funny thing was the same excuse that Courtney Clenny used. You know, Courtney Clenny, the woman currently standing trial for stabbing to death her boyfriend, Christian Obumsele. So if you were disturbed by my made-up story about Andrew Tate at the beginning of this video, then keep that energy for this very real story that this woman is just bragging about, okay? Because if you don't, it's kind of weird.